In a previous video, I talked about using Git with Godot and how you really don't have to do much, but it's important to use Git, and Git is really valuable. I want to make a video that's a follow-up to that, that is actually talking through and showing the Git commands and how to work with it, how to set up a repository on GitHub, and we'll walk through adding some functionality in a Godot game to give you a sense of how I commit and how often I do and what I put in those commits. So we'll go to Godot and we'll make a new project. I put my new projects in my workspace, game dev, then I have one for screencasts and we'll call this Godot Git. And I'm gonna call the project Godot Git. And we'll say create folder, create, we'll do that, that's fine. We'll do compatibility. You want to have Git be the version control metadata, create and edit. So this creates our new Godot project. I'm going to start by showing this all off in the terminal because I use the terminal with Git and the commands in the terminal will mirror whatever GUI you're using. So if you're using GitHub for desktop or source tree or an IDE integration or a Godot plugin, the commands should all be the same. The verbs that are used should be the same. And I think the command line is the most like um, consistent, you know? So it's not that I'm teaching a certain GUI, I'm teaching the commands. I think that's helpful. So what I do is right when I start a project, well, I gotta go to the directory and you gotta install Git if you're on Linux, you know, use your package manager or homebrew if you're on Mac or Windows, there's a downloader. I don't know much about Windows, so I won't say anything more. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not your Windows person. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a certified Windows idiot. Um, so if we're in our project folder, which we are now, let me bump up this text a bit. Um, you'll see git status is the main command. It tells you which files have changed, which files you have staged to be committed, etc. We'll get into what those all mean soon, but um, you'll see fatal, not a git repository. So what we need to do is initialize a git repository. That command is git init. Empty, initialize an empty git repository in our current directory. Now if we run git status, we'll see there are no commits and there are a bunch of untracked files. And Godot created the git attributes and Godot created the git ignore and we have you know already our icon files um, from Godot and the Godot project. And if we cat the project.godot, the project.godot, you'll see the settings. And that's like the beauty of Godot is it's using plain text files for the project settings for the SVG import, right? If we look at icon import, it's all just a bunch of plain text and that's what we want, right? That's really friendly to work with. And uh, this video is going to really focus on if you're just a solo developer. So if you're working with teammates, there's other ways of working. But as a solo developer, you, just, you can keep it pretty simple and there's just a few commands you need to know. And the benefits you get here is you get a backup of your game code, you get a log of the work you've done, and you can easily go back to previous you know, versions of your game, states of your game's code to try to figure out bugs or um, debug things. It's, it, it's just really helpful. And also I find it helps to have a timing, you know, of when you were working on things, um, just from a like analysis perspective. So anyways, we'll get status again. We have nothing there. We have no commits yet because it's an empty Git repository. You create commits. Commits are atomical changes that you describe with language about what changed and why. It's really important to be descriptive because if you go and you look in your commit history and you're trying to understand why you did something a certain way, like a detective, because your memory will fade, but Git, Git is forever. So um, what you do is you call Git add to add certain files to your stage to be committed. So if I add the .git attributes file and I do git status again, you'll see changes to be committed. This is called the stage. You'll see it's green here. We have that new file. And you can remove files from the stage, but that's a little advanced. I wouldn't worry about that yet. And then we still have these files that are untracked. So then we know we want all these files and you'll see a lot of people um, by default just always do git add dash all. If we do git status now, everything's green. It's been added to the stage to be committed. And usually that works, like 90% of the time that works. But sometimes maybe you made 
a bunch of changes and you want to make separate commits from them, you can only you can choose to selectively add certain files or even parts of a file. Again, that's more advanced. Don't worry about it. But you know, git add and then you type out the path to the file, or you can do git add dash dash all, or you can do I think that will work too. Um, no, that doesn't work. I don't know. You can also do period. That's the same thing. Um, so you add these to your stage. And then what you do is you type git commit. When you type git commit, it will open up in your environment variables echo um, editor authoring the commit message. So my editor set to vim, to NeoVim specifically. If you set it to VS Code or Sublime or gedit or whatever, you know, it'll open it there. Um, so I type git commit and then it opens it and it says, you know, this is all comments and it tells you the files that are here. And I always start my project with an initial commit of the clean generated, whatever the engine gives me, because then I know that's what's there. And uh, don't worry if you don't, if you don't know Vim and it opens Vim, you might be in for a hard time. <laughs> um, but um, the basics of Vim is you press I to go into insert mode and then you type and then you press escape and then colon WQ to save it. But yeah, I would advise to not <laughs> Learn Vim and Git at the same time and stuff. Um, you know, use use a GUI or you know set the editor path, the editor environment variable to you know the path to your editor. There's a lot of caveats with all this stuff, so if <laughs> it is overwhelming, let me just acknowledge like Git at the beginning is is pretty overwhelming. But what I'll just say here is initialize new repository. I'll say initialize new project with Godot 4.0, and I just like to make it clear you know, what version this was initialized with. So then save that, it creates the commit and you can see it did here. And now if we do get status, we're on branch main. We'll not worry about branches, Bran main and master, it used to be called master, it still might be called master depending on the version of git you use, is your branch. Branches are like a tree, you have the main trunk of the tree, that's your main branch you're working on, then you can branch off of it. You can make, merge those branches back in. But really when you're working by yourself, you probably just use main branch, so don't worry about branches yet, but just know that like, if you wanna experiment with something, you could branch off of main and do some experimenting in isolation and you know, not have to commit to uh, using it. Uh, so git status is a command you run a lot. Git commit is how you create your commits. And then git log shows you the log of those commits. And you'll see this long hash kind of looking thing. It's called a SHA, S-H-A, the git SHA. And um, that's our commit. That's the unique identifier for our commit. You can see I authored it. You can see the date and you can see my message. And you can write more detailed messages if you want. I generally do. But so now we have our Git log, we have that. Let's go to GitHub and create a repository because this is where it's really valuable, right? You wanna make these backups. So I have a GitHub account. We'll click new. And I'm gonna call it Godot Git. And it's just an example. You know, how you name this is up to you, whatever. It's uh, totally up to you. Using git githo for a screencast. You can make it public or private. They're free now. You still have to pay to have private ones after like a certain amount or maybe even any private ones, but um, public or private. I'll keep it public because I want to share this with you. And you can add a readme and a git ignore and a license, but I usually skip all that and uh, just create my repository and don't do any of that. I'll add that stuff manually if I want. And then you can set it up in desktop if you're using GitHub for desktop, or you can copy this URL. And it even tells you how to push an existing repository, so it's pretty helpful. So I'll just copy that, right? So this says git remote add origin. Origin is a remote, like it's a place where you wanna push your Git repository because your Git repository exists in many different places. It exists on your computer and it can exist on any number of servers. It can exist on your other computer if you have multiple computers um, and you can kind of push and pull between them all. So we'll add one called origin. Origin will just be GitHub and that's where we mainly push our code. This sets the branch to main and then we push our code. So git push is how we push code to different places. We're gonna push origin and we're gonna, we're gonna push the main branch to origin. And uh, that's what all that stuff that GitHub gives you here does. And we'll talk more about pushing in a second. So now if you refresh this, now we have our project here and we can click here and view our commit history and you'll see it matches what we had before. We click into here 
and you see there's a shortened version of the commit SHA here, and let's just verify it matches, 416C987, yep, those match, so, um, and GitHub nicely shows your images and um, all your data, so, yeah, we've got a new Git repository, it's pushed up to GitHub, and we are off like a herd of turtles, you know? Now we can make our game and um, we'll go ahead and let's add a scene 2D and I'll just call it main and save that. Drag an old uh, Godot bot. No one's told me the, go the robot's name yet, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to call the robot. Um, and we'll add a script to main and we'll do the old favorite rotate with Delta. I'm ashamed, it's my only trick in the book. And then run it, select a current, and we'll see that sweet, sweet spinning icon. Now if we go back to the terminal, and we do get status, you'll see that we've modified project.gado, and we have two new untracked files, main.gd and main.tscn. Main.gd is our GD script code that we wrote with the rotating. TSCN is the main scene that I created with the icon and saved. But let's go ahead and we'll do git diff. This shows you, the git diff command shows you what has changed with the files that are being tracked with git. So it only shows us the difference of project.gado. It doesn't show us the diff here because we haven't tracked these files with Godot. So you'll see it said the main run, the run main scene to um, main.tscn. So go back to get status. Get status is really clear. That command was get diff, just to remind you. Get status again. Untracked files and modified files. We want to add all these to our stage and commit them, and this commit would be something like rotate the icon. Um, and you could imagine instead of it being rotate the icon, maybe it's make player jump, maybe it's add enemy, maybe it's add level two, maybe it's refine level two, right? Whenever you do a piece of work that you consider to be done, that moves your project forward, create a commit. And I create a lot of commits. You wanna err on the side of creating more commits, not fewer commits, because the more fidelity you have to the commits you make, the um, more useful they'll be to you. If you just go and do like three days of work and then commit it and just say like, made a bunch of changes, that's not very useful for historical purposes. And you will go back <laughs> when you revisit your code base in years and try to understand why you did something the way you did it. You will go back and look at the Git history, especially if you are making a big project. You're trying to help your future self by leaving comments and detailed Git commit messages about what changed and why. So we'll just do git add data dash all and we'll get status and now all these changes have been added to the stage, and I want to show you how to view what's been added to the stage. So if you do git diff dash dash cached, that shows you the diff of the files that have been added to the stage. If you didn't add them to the stage, nothing would show up. But now we see, you know, we added our process function, we added our new scene, and we set that to be the run main scene. So if we git status, we've got all of that there. Now we could commit. Here's another tip on committing. If you do dash V, that's for verbose, it will show you below here the diff of what has changed. This is really helpful, I find, when writing detailed commits because um, it's really annoying to have to like switch back and forth to view the code that's changed um, when writing detailed commits. So we'll just say make the uh, add Godot robot icon and rotate it. And I'll just say like, this is uh, really nice. It looks good, so fancy. You know, this is kind of a trivial thing, but I will write like detailed, detailed commits and um, save that. And now we do get status. Our branch is one ahead of our origin main. So that's what's on GitHub. We're gonna wanna push our code up. But if we do git log again, I just wanna show you. Now we have two commits. They show in order, in reverse order reverse chronological order. So like the most recent ones are at the top. And um, that's git log. So we've got a lot of commands we're going through, um, but these are the basics of them. Then you can do git push. Before, remember we did git push dash u origin main. Well, our local git repository knows that we wanna push it to origin. 
So you can just do git push and it will automatically push it up to GitHub. So you can have that command be a bit shorter. And now when we go here, we see that we've got our two commits on GitHub and uh, that most recent change is there. So that is, you know, you get in this flow and then you don't really think about it too much. And, you know, you just push it up there and you got it as a backup. It's safekeeping. If you are working on a game with other people, it unlocks another functionality of Git where you can make changes on branches and create pull requests where you say, I want to merge these changes in. So if you are working with other people, keep exploring this. It's really helpful because um, then there's less conflicts and there's less like divergence of um, what multiple people might be working on. And it's, it's really foundational to, if you want to contribute to the Godot engine on GitHub, um, you know, this is, uh, yeah, this stuff is the foundation to all of how Godot is developed, whether it's people making pull requests, like um, this person, you know, made a pull request off their pick one branch and they're trying to merge it into master and in, uh, Godot. But for your game projects, yeah, that's the, that's the core of it. Um, let's just add one more piece of functionality and we'll make it so that um, I'm not feeling very creative. So we'll do something I've done in other videos, which is making our icon pause and stop rotation. So um, if we're rotating, we'll rotate it and then we'll add in the input, in the input um, callback, we'll just say if event that is action press UI accept, which is the space bar rotating is negated rotating run that and now when we press the space bar our buddy stops rotating and um so we do get status right um sorry i i have a, i have some shortcuts for get that like do what i do all the time that's like muscle memory but let me uh ignore the gap the gap i just typed that's short for get add dash p and that lets you go through a file and add certain chunk hunks um and this is like yes no quit all delete as in, you know, don't add anymore. And, um, you know, this interface here is kind of maybe a lot, but um, anyway, um, this uh, git add p is like, just if you did git add all, you know, it would add main.gd to it. But, you know, I'll often do git add dash p and see like, okay, yeah, it's a way to review my code as I'm adding it to git. So like, uh, you know, you'll catch bugs this way, right? You'll be like, oh, that's weird. I didn't notice that. Or, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Because you're trying to, like, a lot of this code stuff or this stuff with Git for me is about, like, it helps me write better code. It's a tool to use. And it's not like eating your vegetables, right? And I think some people view it that way. Like, I don't care if you use Git or not, right? Like, you could just, like, put it on Dropbox or iCloud Drive or whatever, some OneDrive on Microsoft, whatever, you can put your project there and have it backed up. Like, that's something I do care about. I want you to back up your games. That's really important. Um, and have it so in case your hard drive fails, you still have your games. For me, Git is a tool that I use. It helps me write better code and I think make better software. So um, I think there's valid reasons to do that. But um, I don't know why I started talking about <laughs> why I don't care whether or not you use Git. Um, if you do want to use it, I'm hoping this video helps you. Um, but, um, you know, it's a tool to be used that has value, but it's, it's optional, especially if you're working solo. So, um, I added main.gd changes there. I'll go ahead and I'll commit with verbosity and I'll say roads, you know, toggle, um, Godot robot icon with spacebar, um, you know, to help with motion sickness. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Like, you're gonna add stuff to your game and you'll commit it and uh, we'll push it up. Whoops, uh, I had a typo, but Git's pretty smart these days and knows I meant that. And that pushes it up to GitHub. So that is the fundamentals of using Git from the command line for game development. That's the like fidelity at which I make commits. And let me show you some of my example games that uh, will give you a sense of that. So like, um, here is uh, a couple projects, and this is Godot types, a bunch of prototypes I made with Godot. And also, since I'm making my work open source, creating detailed commits 
for other people to view should, you know, help them out and understand why I changed what I changed. So you'll see here, you know, I follow a specific commit formatting. Don't worry about that. That's like more advanced, doesn't matter. It's just, I have a tool that does that for me automatically. But you can see here, like in this game shooting gallery, I was using a um, specific type of node. I was using a rigid body 3D, but I wanted it to be just area 3D. So I changed it and I just commit when I changed it, you know, and that seems trivial, but the thing is like sometimes Godot like might crash or like if you rename things, it might cause problems. And if you can easily just like undo your changes with Git, that's uh, really valuable. So, um, you know, here I added a cursor and I added a sprite from Kenny and I'll note that in the comments of the Git commit so I remember, right? Um, or if someone reads this commit and they see it and they're like, where'd that come from? And I can be like, oh yeah, it's a Kenny asset. Um, I uh, added some aiming to something and I watched a YouTube video that helped me. So I linked to that and um, you know, yeah, th that's the level at which I commit things. Now let's go ahead and like break our code and I'll show you how to like get out of a tricky situation. So if we change that to that, that's just some junk code, whatever. Our game doesn't run. If we go to get status, we do git diff, and we see that that's there. To get, to lose that change, you know, get, when you do get status, it gives you quite a bit of um, help. You know, you might be overwhelmed if you're not used to command line interfaces, but then once you get used to them, it's like pretty fast and helpful. But git tells you, use git restore file to discard changes in the working directory. So you just do what it says. You do git restore main.gd. GST is my git status. I'm sorry, this muscle memory stuff is bad for screencasting. Um, and then when we change that, it actually updated automatically in the Godot script editor. And um, sometimes it might prompt you. So um, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So that was git restore. In the old days, back in my day, it used to be git checkout dash dash the file name, which is confusing because it's different than checking out a branch. So I think, I think they renamed it. So I'll often do git checkout that, you know, that's muscle memory. But the new command these days is git restore. And if you want to know more about any of these things, if you're new to the command line, you can do dash dash help. And it'll tell you more than you would ever care to know about any of this stuff. Git is such a robust tool. Um, and I think maybe that's part of why it has a reputation of being hard to learn. But, you know, I think in summary, we've got git status, we've got git diff, we've got git push, we've got git <clears throat> um, restore to undo your changes. Um, we've got git commit to create your commits. We've got git add to add files. You can do git add that all, dash dash all. Um, and you know, those are about the five, five to 10 commands you'll use day after day after day after day, and you'll get used to it. And the more you use it, the easier it'll get. Um, and I just thought it'd be helpful to open up GitHub desktop and show you what a GUI is like. There's one called Source Tree as well, um, but I have this installed and set up, and I'm recommending using GitHub Desktop, or, or I'm recommending putting your code on GitHub. So I figure why not just use the free Git client they have, and they have a repository tutorial, which is cool. But we'll add an existing repository from our hard drive, and you know that is um, if you're creating a new one in the GUI, it'd be a different experience. But for me, you know, I've already got this repository, so. Um, We'll go ahead to game dev. Remember, we set it up in screencasts and then we called it Godoka and you just click open and then add repository. Now GitHub desktop is tracking this repository and you can change it up here. And this gives you a visual sense of what we were just experiencing. So you can click history and sh gosh, get the heck out of here. Um, and you can see all of our history of the commits, which is cool. Um, and then let's make some changes in our code. Like we'll make it so that um, rotating is false by default. And then you press space to turn it on. Um, now, if we go back to GitHub desktop, you'll see in changes tab, it shows this already here. It shows main GD with that change. And if we had multiple files that changed, it would also change it. Like we could change this to be like, robot and then we gotta update this code too 
but um, you know, we'll make sure it runs. Okay, it works great. Um, now if we go back to GitHub Desktop, now we see both of these changes, and you can like, you know, the, the equivalent of git add in this GUI is uh, these checkboxes. So like, you check here, you check here, it tells you it's a modified file. So now we've checked these files, we're gonna add them to the commit. We'll describe it, right? We'll say don't rotate robot by default. And then, you know, it was making me sick. Whatever, you know, and you click the commit button and that's the GUI version of git add and then git commit. And then it actually tells you that we have these changes that need to be pushed. And uh, you can do command P or you can push origin and it goes ahead and does git push origin main for you. So, you know, that's like the same thing we just did and it's through a GUI. Um, use whatever you feel comfortable with and um, keep practicing it. Have fun with it. Like, I don't know, I put, I, I try to make myself laugh a little, like, you know, it should be fun. And um, I think that's enough of the basics with Git. I hope, I hope this was helpful. I hope this wasn't just like throwing you into the deep end of the pool. But um, if you're interested in Git, hopefully this helped you learn it. If you're new to Git and you're not even, you don't know what it is, um, maybe seek out some other resources first. But this is more about using Git with Godot from the command line and the fidelity at which I create commits. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.